What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today we're taking another look at the 22Link Wi-Fi router that I got overseas in Asia. And as a public service announcement, if you have this Wi-Fi router, you should unplug it and stop using it right now. Uh, there have been a lot of vulnerabilities, which we'll br briefly talk about, uh, in this device over the past years. But that's not why I'm telling you today that you should disconnect it. I'm telling you that you should not use this router today because currently, right now, its firmware update infrastructure is compromised. And I am going to show you this because I have gotten no response from the vendor. They have a history of not taking security very seriously. So we are going to disclose this with some censoring just so that you guys all can't go get a free shell out there. But we are gonna walk through how I discovered an RCE in the cloud server that this device connects to. Let's go. All right, and we're going to take a look at my setup that I have to uh, intercept traffic from my device and, and its traffic out to the cloud. So if you watch my channel, if you're new to it, um, this is a tool that I have developed called Man in the Middle Router, and it is a tool that uh, it just tapes together a bunch of uh, Linux tools that allow us to uh, spin up a router, a Wi-Fi router if we need that. In this case, we just have Ethernet, and uh, we actually have a diagram down here of the whole system. So uh, we're not going to go over this too much, but what this is allow going to allow us to do is going to allow us to uh, take Wireshark captures on this bridge interface right here, and uh, we'll have Wireshark here where we'll be able to see all the packets once we turn on our router. But like I said, first let's talk a little bit about this device. If you just search the word 22Link and vulnerabilities, you find a bunch of stuff. You find that these devices have in the past been a part of the Mirai botnet, have uh, a whole host of CVEs to its name, uh, has a long track record of not taking device security very seriously, and I see uh, what we're going to talk about today is that they have emulated those same uh, security practices, poor security practices, on their cloud infrastructure as well. By the way, if you're new to this channel, I do one takes and I am sick. So that's why I sound weird. All right, so let's go over to Wireshark and we're going to start this device up on my desk over there and we're just going to wait. Uh, for the traffic to appear on this bridge interface. Um, yeah, let's go back here and talk about this a little bit more while we're waiting for the traffic to roll in. So uh, you see here, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're not using. We're not using this, uh, this Wi-Fi interface, but here we have this Ethernet interface. That is a USB to Ethernet dongle that I have. It's like a $10 Amazon Basics thing that I have plugged in to a USB hub. And then the WAN port on the Wi-Fi router is plugged into that. And that just allows us to run Wireshark on this bridge interface. And then we have some IP tables rules that are gonna forward that all out to the internet where it's supposed to go. And all the man in the middle stuff we're actually ignoring today. So this just allows us to capture traffic. So now we pop over here and we can see a bunch of stuff. And we are just going to look at a set of HTTP requests, not TLS, connections, right? Because this device, all of its communications, uh, as far as I have observed, when, that go out to the internet are in clear text HTTP in, you know, 2024. It still happens. Um, people sometimes ask me, hey, Matt, how do you find, you know, how, how, do you, how do you get that bug bounty on some hardware program? You would be surprised how much clear text HTTP there still is floating around there today, even on hardened targets. Uh, so it's no surprise that on a non-hardened target that we see that right here. So we see this request go out uh, that says, um, you know, a post. It's, a, it's an HTTP post request going to slash device slash upgrade slash check. Okay. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out what this API request is doing. It's checking for an update 
from this server. And so what we're going to do in Wireshark is we're going to right click, we're going to say follow TCP stream or HTTP stream, you can do either one, it's going to give you this uh, menu right here. And what we see is that we see, you know, there is a post request here. And then we get what we get back is is, you know, not that interesting, right? But it basically there's a URL field. And it's empty, right? And it's pretty obvious uh, how to interpret this that there is no update available. There's no update that is needed at this time. But uh, yeah, we can understand pretty clearly that if a URL was to be returned here, <clears throat> that that URL would be used by the device to download a firmware update and install it on the device. And you can be sure that this device would definitely not be doing any kind of signature verification uh, on the firmware file itself. It would just blindly install it, right? So we already have a vulnerability here, right? It's already performing this security critical task in clear text. It's not encrypting it. It's not doing any kind of uh, integrity checks, right? So we already have a vulnerability in the device and its update process. But this server that we see here, um, this is what interested me. and caused me to go a step further in my research process. So what we're going to do is I have set up uh, my machine to go to a different host name that's, that we're going to call update.server.com. That, that's this host name. And then I've got some, some things set up in the background where it's going to redirect to the actual server so, uh, so I can censor uh, the real host uh, where this is at. So. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, so, so what I did is I used a tool called nu Nuclei. And this is a scanning tool, a vulnerability scanning tool that is open source. It's written by the open source community, uh, heavily used in the bug bounty community. You can uh, add your own modules to it to look for vulnerabilities that only you know how to look for. Um, but all we did was... Uh, okay, let's forget about that for a minute. And uh, so I ran that scan uh, against the site. <clears throat> and let's see what it found. <clears throat> so uh, clearly, it's running PHP. There's okay, there's some like test PHP file, there's a bunch of stuff that's not that interesting. And then uh, you lo and behold, you scroll down, and it found a critical. Uh, this is the first time I have ever seen Nuclei return a critical, so obviously I was super excited. And so let's go ahead and let's 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 just copy and paste this string here into our web browser. So uh, so over here I have a web browser. Well, wow, that's a spoiler alert. Um, I am running Kaido, and so we're going to paste this in here. And whoa, it executes the PHP info function, and it passes it an argument of one. Well, what if we were to change the function that we were executing to say system? And for the argument, let's pass ID and see what happens. OK, there we go. We have, uh, we have code execution on this server. A server, nonetheless, that is responsible for firmware updates. It's, it's the server that's going, that this device reaches out to and says, hey, do you have a URL where I should download firmware from? So that means if this server can be compromised, then you could change it to serve up a malicious firmware file, and you can exploit every device that reaches out to it for a firmware update. Pretty crazy. So let's poke around with this some more, but we're actually going to use Kaido here. So I, I've, been, I've been proxying these requests. And uh, so here we can see that request. And what we're going to do is we're going to say right click. Uh, we're going to go send to replay in our default collection. And then we're going to go to the replay tab, where we can start to. Uh, execute some more commands. So let's type ls-la. This is the first thing I did when I got on the server. 
and we see some interesting stuff here. So the one file that caught my eye immediately that kind of stands out is this one. It doesn't seem like it belongs there. And that's because it doesn't. Look at the, the modified dates on all these other files. Uh, you can see, you know, it's not from this year. And so it has the year listed. But this file was, was added there on May 10th. So I think uh, by the making of this video about four months ago. This server has been, has been pwned for that long because let's look at what's in that file. All right, I'm just gonna copy that. Just gonna do, we're, gonna, we're just gonna cat this file out. So what we can see here, uh, I don't know if I can make that bigger, but uh, what we can see here is that this is a little piece of PHP code that is going to take a web request with the uh, argument with the name of x and then it is going to pass that into the eval function which effectively gets you code execution so this is a backdoor that someone has placed on this server that is responsible for firmware updates and the backdoor has been there for four months uh and and, and what it's likely there for is if for some reason they patch this vulnerability in this think you know this think php uh module this uh you know content management system that somebody's designed if if that gets patched then and they don't notice this file there then they still have a way back in right uh so i haven't looked in anymore if this is like they the attacker is like currently like on the system still doing anything malicious but all sorts of bad stuff could be happening on the server and again like we talked about uh from our wireshark output uh the attacker could simply modify let's go let's like just go back and look at this so so the peach uh, the php files here that are responsible for processing that uh, that check update request. So we're going to switch back to Wireshark here. Th this request here, the PHP file that's responsible for this device upgrade check endpoint, could easily be modified to just always return a URL to the attacker's own server where they could serve up a malicious firmware update, and they could easily take over. You know thousands of devices that are out there in the field. So I, I wanted to disclose this vulnerability, uh, not, to, uh, not to say to just go around and, and run around RCing things. That's not the point, right? The point is that these low cost IoT devices are oftentimes backed by companies that really don't care. They really uh, do the development up front and then it's a marketing team from that point. They don't have any active engineering teams uh, working on this stuff a lot of the times. Uh, or it's being white labeled, right? And the company never had any engineering employees in the, in the first place. I, I, I tried to contact the company in multiple different ways, gave them time, but unfortunately, given the track record uh, that other researchers have had with this company, it just doesn't look like it's gonna be in the cards to get this fixed. So uh, again, if you have one of these devices, the server that is responsible for performing firmware updates is actively exploited right now. So uh, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what kind of videos you like to see. Have a good day.